Our presentation title today is Me, 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 Part 2. Last time we had a sermon called Me, Me, Me. We looked at the nature of, of prayer and we looked at how God can't answer selfish prayers because that would be teaching us to become selfish. We looked at the story of Hannah and we found out that God only answered her prayer after Hannah reached the point where she decided to dedicate the most precious thing that she desired to God. But before we start, I'd just like to say another very quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we invite your spirit to be with us this morning. Father, we pray that you open our hearts and that you draw us nearer to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The stock market is a place where you can make a lot of money very quickly. You can also lose a lot of money very quickly. Our friend Casey actually made a lot of money very quickly on the stock market. But it's always tricky to know which stocks to choose. And there are many people who will try to sell you their products, to sell you their services, saying that they know how to choose the right stocks. I remember I had someone come to our house oh, many years, probably 20 years ago, trying to sell me this program that said that if you buy this program, we guarantee that you will make a profit. If not, we'll refund you the money. It cost $10,000. They were very persuasive, but I, I didn't end up buying the program from them. A interesting gentleman, Burton Malkiel, wrote a best-selling book called A Random Walk Down Wall Street. And in this book, he claimed that a blindfolded monkey throwing darts at a newspaper has a better chance at choosing the right portfolio than the most highly trained specialists. Research affiliates decided to put this to the test. They got 100 monkeys and they got them to choose stock randomly from newspapers. Now what they did is they used uh, older newspapers because that way they could see well, how they performed the next year. They found that the average monkey outperformed the benchmark index by 1.7%. Now I don't need to tell you that is a lot of bananas. <laughs> the Bible also has an interesting parable about investment and it's found in Matthew chapter 25. Now, I just wanted to, to set the scene before we, we look into it. You see, Matthew chapter 25 follows, not surprisingly, Matthew chapter 24. And you will find, especially for those of us who have a, a red letter Bible, you'll find that there's no break between, there's no like black text that says, oh, and Jesus then went to Samaria or his disciples did this and this. No, there is, it's a continuous monologue from Matthew 24 and 25. Now Matthew 24 tells us about the signs of the end. Essentially what Jesus did after he told us the signs of the end, he then proceeded to tell us a number of parables and I believe that these parables have specific importance now at the time of the end. So we're going to read through Matthew chapter 25 starting in verse 14. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and bought another five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you deliver me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. 
Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talents in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. You ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has, more will be given and he will have in abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, one of the first things that, that stood out for me in this parable was everyone got a gift from the Lord. There wasn't any who didn't get any gifts. Every one of them got gifts from God. And I remember when, when I thought about it, I was like, yeah, but one of them just got one talent. You know, just, just one. So I decided to have a look and see how much is one talent? One talent was equivalent to 6,000 denarii. One denarii was the average wage for a Roman soldier for one day's work. So presuming that they're working six days a week and have two days holiday, you'd earn about 300 denarii a year. So one talent is equal to 20 years wages. Now using the current average salary in Australia, one talent would be equal to $1,782,440. A lot was invested in, into even the one who got just, just a little bit. God gives each of us many gifts. He cares for each one of us and He provides with us many gifts that we can use in His kingdom. The other thing that stood out for me was that all of the gifts belong to God. They all belong to the Lord. None of the servants came around and said, okay, you've given me two talents. I'm going to add my own two talents and together we'll, we'll work. No, no, no. Everyone received gifts from God and they all belong to God. There's a number of verses in the Bible that make this extremely clear. Deuteronomy 10 says, Indeed, the heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord, your God. Also the earth with all that is in it. Everything in the earth belongs to God. God says through Haggai, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. In Psalms, it says, For every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. I love that imagery. And something jumped out at me as I thought of this. Right? The beasts of the forest, they don't typically belong to anyone, right? So what are, what are the beasts of the forest? Well, here, you know, there'd be the koalas, the kangaroos, the lizards, the platypus, right? They all, God says, they belong to me. But then he says, the cattle on a thousand hills. Now, cattle typically have owners. Well, God is saying, no, no, no. Those cattle belong to me. Everything that we have here belongs to God. Now, I love booyah chips. They are absolutely amazing. They, they even sound to be healthy, they're uh, non-GMO, they're gluten-free. And I know what you're thinking, has Booyah paid Marius to insert an advertisement in the middle of his sermon? The answer is no, unfortunately. They should have, but, but they, they're not. We were eating a lot of these, and one day I saw they were on special. I think it was at Woolies. They're usually $4 a packet, and they're on special at half price for $2 a packet. So I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of them and keep them in my shed and that way I'll be saving two dollars each time I eat a packet. Right, it's very, very sound reasoning. And 
being an Adventist, I decided to buy 77 packets. And I put them in my shed. Now, both Daniel and Sarah actually love these as well. Daniel calls them spicy, because they're, they're a little spicy. And one day, after Daniel had, had had his meal, he said, Daddy, can I have some spicy? And I was like, okay, you can have some spicy. So I got a little plate, and I put them on his plate, and I gave them to him, and he said, thank you, Daddy. And I was like, you're welcome. And he, he started eating them, and then I saw that on the plate was one of these ones. These ones are kind of rare, and they're my favorite ones. And it was calling out to me. So I thought, all right, I I'm going to reach over and, and get this one. So I reach over to pick it up, and Daniel goes like this. Moves the plate out of my reach and gives me this look. And I'm thinking, you ungrateful little boy. Right? These all belong to me. They're mine. I have so graciously let you eat some of them. Right? Don't you know, I'm much stronger than you are. If I wanted to, I can take them all away. Or I can choose to give you another plateful. In my garage, I have 77 packets. No, I probably have 40 now, but I have 40 packets in my garage. And if I want to, I can go to Woolies and buy some more. They're on half price again. I can shower you with cracker mix if I want to. I wonder how many times God feels like this. He has given us resources and gifts that he intends us to use in his kingdom. And when we're asked, can you do this? Can you help with this? We're like... I wonder how he feels. I remember when I saw this, when I saw Daniel do that, my, my heart hurt a little bit. I thought, you know, I, I'm doing all I can, and here you are being selfish. I think God's heart hurts a little bit when he sees us taking the things away that he has given us in order to grow his kingdom. In verse 21, it says, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. This is almost identical to what he said to the other servant. The only difference is here it says you were faithful. The other one says you have been faithful. It's, it's essentially word for word to what he said to both of the servants. And something jumped out at me is this here. It said, you were faithful over few things. God expects us to be faithful with the few things he's given us before he's going to give us more. I remember before I gave my heart to God, I was, I was thinking, if only I was in this situation. Or if only I had the gifts that this person has. Then I would do this and this and this and this and this. Right. I was sitting there, not doing anything, looking at the people who were actually growing their talents, who were actually doing things, and criticizing them for not doing it the way that I would have done it in their situation. While at the same time, sitting on my own gifts and doing nothing with them. I remember I used to think when the Spirit is poured out in the last days. You know, we're expecting the latter rain where the Holy Spirit will, will be poured out and there will be a worldwide revival. I was thinking, when, when this happens, oh, I'm going to be doing this and this and this and this and this. I now realize that if we're not using our gifts right now, we won't even notice when the Spirit's poured out in the end. We're not going to get more gifts to use if we're not using the, the ones that we have right now. 
God expects each one of us to use the, the gifts that He has given us. One of the ideas that God has put on my heart is to invite everyone in this church to do something for God. God has given each of us a light. And He expects us to use it for His glory. I want to invite you to ask God, what can I use the gifts that you have given me? There is a show called The Chosen, which Gabrielle and I like to watch. It's a show, it's a series about Jesus' life. And they take some creative license and um, fill in the, the story. I was actually surprised to see that a number of times they've used uh, parts from Desire of Ages to do that. And I was watching the last episode they put out. And in this episode, Simon the Zealot joins Jesus and the disciples. And there's a conversation between Jesus and Simon, and Jesus asks for his dagger. See, the Zealots were very opposed to the Romans, and they were often violent in doing so. And Simon gives it to the, the character playing Jesus, and he takes it and throws it into the river. And Simon asks him an interesting question. He says, what need do you have of me without my dagger? And I love the response that he was given. The character playing Jesus said, I have all I need. I wanted you. God has all he needs. He has the cattle on a thousand hills. Everything is his. God wants us. It's not that He needs us. He, he wants us. He wants to have a relationship with each one of us. I wanted to invite you to spend some time in prayer and ask yourself, what can I do for God? What can I do for the church here? What can I do for outreach? God may show you that He may want you to be a greeter at the door. He may want you to put a letterbox at the front so prayer requests can be put. Someone gave me that idea. It was a really good idea, Susie. He may ask you to come and to pray for those around us. I don't know what God will ask you to do. But I am certain that God has something for each one of us that He wants us to do. This thing that He has for us to do isn't because He needs us. But it's because He wants us. He wants us to be part of His kingdom. Amen.